returns on Saturday against Gilbert Burns. He joins us right now from Rio. Hello, Neil. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Have you had acai yet in Brazil? Oh, yeah. I had it every morning since I've been here thus far. Oh, my gosh. Uh, weight's good, so it's definitely been part of the diet. There's a lot, a lot of calories, though, right? Isn't it a very sugary uh, meal? I have no idea, but it's delicious. And it it's, is delicious. Uh, the weight's been coming down, so I'm just going to keep putting it away. Oh, my God. It is so delicious. Have you ever had it in Brazil prior to this trip, or is this your first time? No, I, uh, so it's my fourth time coming down to Brazil and I've had it every single okay. time. Um, and like, it, it's kind of weird because like, um, b- like the, I say we get back at home is not the same that you get here in Brazil. Um, Thank and you. To, like make it taste similar. There's like all these additives and things that they do to it, but here is just, uh, just like a, a huge difference, whatever. So I was like, if it's considered a super food back at home when it's processed, it'll probably be amazing and good for me to eat fight week here. So. I mean, eating it, no problem at all. So keep on going with it. Thank you for saying that because the guys here were mocking me when I said that. It's a vastly superior food in Brazil. It's totally different than what we get here in America. And they do add all this crap to it to try to disguise that it's so processed. I just have it with banana and granola. <laughs> what about you? That's exactly what happened. Banana and granola. Uh, if I'm not cutting weight, I'll throw some honey on there, but that's pretty much the way to go. Tremendous. I'm so jealous. Uh, by the way, what is the scene like in Rio <laughs> right now? Like we saw in the news, it was a little tense some 10 or so days ago. Do you see any remnants of that? No, it's actually been pretty calm, actually. I mean, we're right off the beach. Uh, literally can see the beach right outside my window. Um, and it's been pretty calm. Like it's been pretty mellow for the most part. Um, got to go around, do a little bit of touristy things, uh, checking out different spots here and there. Um, and the overall app- atmosphere has been pretty calm. I mean, even with the fans, they've been super respectful thus far. Uh, nothing too crazy. So um, it's been a great couple of days so, so far. And and how long have you been there? Uh, I got here Monday, Monday morning. Okay. So not so far out. I mean, pretty, I mean, usually you'll get to the, to the fight week spot Tuesday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Normally you will, but like uh, coming down to sea level from elevation, I feel like the less time spent at sea level, the better it is for me. I uh, just kind of retain some of that uh, high altitude training I've been doing for the last couple of months. So um, yeah, like I said, coming down here closer to the fight, I think is the best way to do it. Um, the sleep schedule adjust is not too bad. It's only a five hour difference from uh, Colorado. Uh, so that's not throwing me off at all. Uh, how did this one come about? Because I, I saw there was obviously a lot of talk with Burns and Masvidal and, and, you know, he wanted a big fight with one of those bigger, you know, um, older welterweights, if you will. And then we get you, who's always available to fight anyone, who always asks to fight anyone. Of course, the most <laughs> famous one, Hamzat, that I keep reminding people that you wanted to fight him. Um, how did it, you know, reach your doorstep, this opportunity? Um, if I'm being honest, I, I saw an opportunity and shot my shot and it worked out. I mean, I knew, um, with the, with the fights playing out the way they did with the, uh, um, uh, because I'm not Covington, uh, Leon Edwards fight with Usman or whatever. Um, I knew that that fight was going to be one that's probably going to be um, getting an immediate rematch. And if not, um, I knew just based off of uh, politics and um, just sheer business and numbers and pay-per-view sales that there could be a slight possibility that Masvidal could slide in there and even um, fight for a title, though he's on a two-fight losing streak. Um, so I just kind of like made this whole theory from my head. Like, oh yeah, it's possible I can fight Burns. Like fight burns. Um, and it's kind of shot my shot. I knew for a fact like the one guy um in the top 10, top 15 he was holding out for would have been Masvidal. Um, and I just kind of seen the opportunity to squeeze in there uh and challenge him to fight down here in Brazil to kind of like sweeten the pot, so to speak. Um, and here we are, a couple months later, fight's taking place. Wow. So you saw all the chatter and and you reached out to the UFC or someone on behalf of you reached out and just said, I want that fight, and that's how you got it. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, like I said, it was just one of those things. And I was kind of like, I stayed on top of it too, as far as like being in, a, in the social media threads and that kind of thing to make sure that it was uh, um, something that was being talked about in all angles. Like uh, uh, the initial call out was uh, immediately after my fight with Dan Rodriguez. Um, and shortly after it was like, oh, well, I have an opponent. I'm not uh, ready for you. Um, and I was just like, well, who's the opponent? Like, I'll just want to know so I can kind of uh, follow him and see if there's any uh, <laughs> uh, crazy things that come up or if he needs a last one replacement or anything like that. Um, and there was kind of some hesitancy to uh, uh, reveal who that opponent may have been. Uh, so from there, just kind of like staying on top of it, like, yeah, I want this fight. I want this fight. Uh, no one else is willing to go down there and fight in Brazil. There's um, all types of crazy opportunities that people are holding out for. Um, I'm really willing to take this fight right now. And uh, fortunately enough, here we are. 
Do you think he was bluffing about having an opponent? No, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it was wishful thinking and uh, more so just like, uh, um, like promises from other people that was outside of his control. I'm sure I can almost guarantee his management was working on uh, the Masvidal fight. I mean, um, I'm not going to toot my own horn and say that like uh, fighting me is a better payday for him or anything like that. I know it's not. Um, so if I was his management, I'd be gunning for the Masvidal fight too. I mean, just um, where Masvidal is at in his career and like the uh, um, name recognition he brings to the t- table i know that's something that's uh uh very valuable more than more so than just who you fight at that point so um i have to consider all factors so for me it was just like uh recognizing the opportunity and going for it was there something about gilbert that really excited you other than you know he's a name he's had a nice run was there something about his fighting style or any other reason that made you really want to go after this fight um off the top there's the challenge challenge itself that he presents. I mean, he's a very good fighter. He's able to knock guys out, submit guys, uh, go to distance. He's very well rounded. So, um, the challenge itself was definitely one of the, uh, things that piqued my interest. Uh, and then to like, just be open and honest about it. Number five spot. Like, you know what I mean? Like this, uh, at the end of the day, fighting for a title of UFC champion is the ultimate goal. Um, and I feel like beating a top five guy gets me closer to that goal than ever. Uh, so Though he has all these accolades, though he's a very skilled fighter and very talented fighter, um, I just saw a huge opportunity for me to go out there um, and really progress my career, and I was willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Um, obviously, you know, like I said, you've been uh, asking for the Hamzad fight for a while. His last fight was against Hamzad. How do you think he did against him? Um, I thought he did great. I mean, though he came out short in that fight with the loss, like uh, I honestly thought he did great. I mean, that fight, I mean, it's very rare that you... Uh, um, see a guy coming off of a loss and you think like, oh man, that, that like that guy's great. That guy's a great fighter. But like seeing what he showed in that Hamza fight, um, definitely like um it forced me to take him a lot more serious. Not that I ever like doubted his abilities or anything like that, but um seeing the amount of heart and uh commitment he had in that fight to like actually find a way to, to win uh or try to win, um definitely like damn Gilbert's the real deal for sure. Um like a lot of times it's easy for um, people or all the athletes to kind of like uh, chalk your success up to luck. Like, oh, the guy got lucky submission. Oh, he got caught. Oh, whatever else may be. Um, but watching that fight with Hamza, that was literally just like skill, grit, and effort that that those guys were both displaying. And uh, seeing that fight play out the way they did, um, I was more than excited to go in there with, uh, with Gilbert. Do you think he won or do you think Hamza deserved it? Um, I think Hamzat actually uh, pulled away to victory. Okay. I mean, like I said, it was a close fight. Both guys give it their all. Um, at the end of the day, I think it definitely favored Hamzat. I mean, someone even argued that first round being a 10-8 uh, or whatever. But um, at the end of the day, I think it definitely went the right way. Uh, so you mentioned like his ranking, and this gets you one step closer, hopefully, to being in that title picture. Uh, you recently became the winningest welterweight of all time, which is a huge feat considering who has fought in that weight class. Will it bother you when, like, when you're 67 years old, if you hold that record, but you never got a chance to fight for the belt? What, do you think that that will be something that will gnaw at you, annoy you? How would you feel? No, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the I heard this uh, this expression or this conversation that helps me to kind of wrap up my whole career thus far. Um, and it goes something along the lines that like uh, aim for the I'm sorry, aim for the moon. That way, in case you miss, you still uh, end amongst the stars. Um, and that quote was necessarily saying aim with the intent to miss the moon, but aim with the intent to full on and hit the moon and if you just so happen to miss you're still amongst the stars kind of thing um and when i look at my fighting career that's exactly where i found myself um aiming for for the moon every single opportunity i get every single moment every single day every single fight uh, i'm aiming for the moon and for me that moon is the the ufc title um if 10 years from now i'm looking back at my career and i'm just like oh well i never got an opportunity to be a ufc champion but i did accomplish xyz um that'll be something that i can still still hang my hat on i mean um so far i've been in ufc for 10 years now um and with my 10-year career i've, I've got to literally um change my life change my family's life uh, and a lot of things like that so um moving forward, those things aren't going to change. Those goals aren't going to change for me. Um, so at the end of the day, if I fall short of that goal, um, so be it, I can accept it. I know I did everything within my power, I think my will to get there. Uh, and the things that are outside of my control take place, then I can definitely accept that. You also have the most decision wins, right? In the weight class. Do you think if you had more finishes, same amount of wins, but more of them finishes, you would have fought for the belt already? Um, I'm sure that plays a factor in it here or there. I mean, um, I, at the end of the day, like it, it, it definitely is a, 
uh, a seller's market, so to speak. Like if you go out there and you're able to guarantee a, a knockout or a submission early on, um, things definitely tend to favor you um, as far as like how quick you climb and, and the type of fights you get. Um, but at the end of the day, I can't, I can't force those things to necessarily happen. I can't force those things to take place. Um, I'm on a path less traveled. I mean, I look at guys like um, Leon Edwards and others who um, took that path less traveled, and I, and I see it paying off for them now. Um, and that's kind of where I find myself. I mean, um, it would be great to go out there and get it done. One punch, knockout, great, woohoo. Um, we're on to the next. But the reality of it is most of the fights don't play out that way. Um, and the 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 plus side and downside to have so many fights like there's literally so much footage on me in ufc that like um you can kind of see and tell what i'm gonna do or possibly do from a mile away like you know what i mean and i um and i noticed that with some guys that i fought in the past like carlos Condor, for example um was a guy who i watched compete since i was 18 years old so um by the time that like it came for me to fight carlos Condit, I've i've seen everything that he's done in a fight or whatever else and i kind of like knew going into like all right he's probably gonna try the conic kick or he's gonna try to like diss attack or whatever um those are things that was very um easy to see and kind of game plan for uh in my training camp and like and see on fight night um so my sub being a similar boat like it's like no i'm not bringing any new tools to the uh to the table here it's like neil has a huge reach advantage and he's gonna push the face like that's something that literally anybody in the division can prepare for um and go out there so it's up to me to like kind of and like um switch it up and and, and a slight bit of bit of way where like all right what are some new tools i can add that doesn't like get me too far away from uh who i am and what got me here so to speak but can still kind of like surprise the opponent on fight night um so it definitely creates this interesting dilemma where um a lot of the things that have allowed me to be successful are, is out there for the world to see and kind of uh uh pick apart especially when it comes to watching film and that kind of thing uh, but you did uh, get a finish in your last fight, a very impressive one, a Dars Choke win. Did that feel good? Like, did you feel a bit of a weight lifted off your shoulders? Because it had been a few years since your last finish. Yeah, great. it definitely felt great. I mean, especially going into fight week, I kind of set that bar for myself. Like, all right, go out there um, and get it done. I mean, I, I knew um, the kind of fighter that Dan Rodriguez was, and I, I kind of watched film and knew um, how I could beat him and that kind of thing. Um, and then, like, the comments made uh, during the fight, because, like, all right, cool. I know I can beat him, but can I actually finish him? Like, that was a that was an actual goal I set out for myself. Um, and then the comments made fight week about potentially being a, a gatekeeper and that sort of thing. I was like, oh, cool. Gatekeeper, right? I got your gatekeeper coming right here. Uh, um, it kind of added a little more fuel to the fire to go out there and get that finish for sure. You still want the Hamzad fight? Oh, 100 percent I mean, uh, we had a slight opportunity to uh uh train in New York, and the guy is definitely the real deal. Um I, the best way I can explain it is like I fucked it on and found out. Like uh Hamzad <laughs> is definitely the real deal. Like kind of went in there thinking, like, oh, here's this like sweet little wolf that I can like uh train with in jujitsu. Um, and that thing we got real, real fast. And, um, uh, this more has to the guy more, more so over like, damn, this guy's actually the real deal. Um, it's not a fighter or fight I can take lightly at all. Where, um, if I'm being honest, had I got that fight early on, I might've set myself up for fair looking past him a little bit. Wow. And so what were the circumstances around you training with him in New York? When was that? Uh, it was just pure coincidence. I was in New York, uh, for around Thanksgiving time. And, uh, that was also when PFL did the, uh, um, their finals matches as well. And I guess he was out there supporting and watching some teammates. And uh, um, the next day, he and I were just both at Henzo Gracie Academy, just kind of wow. just kind of showing up the train to see where it goes kind of thing. Um, and it's like the star just kind of aligned for us to get a good training session in. Wow. And uh, obviously, like, you had been trying to get this fight very respectful, but you had been trying to get it. Like, were there any tense moments? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, one second. Um, you're on a mat. I'm here to train. You're I lost train. you there briefly. Uh, if you could just start at the beginning, because I'm f fascinated to know what you say here. So, uh, if you, I think I hear you now. Were there tense right. moments? Um, yeah. So initially, there wasn't any tense moments at all. It was kind of like an opportunity where it's like, I'm here to train. You're here to train. It's very respectful. Kind of like um, going through the motion, not necessarily like uh, super competitive. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna do that. It was just kind of like, ah, right, whatever. You're on a mat. I just had Thanksgiving dinner. I'm here to chill. And it's kind of like <laughs> get a decent workout in or whatever. Um, but that escalated very quickly. I mean, it, it went from like that to like a full on like grappling match, getting slammed, all this kind of crazy stuff. So yeah, it definitely escalated very quickly there. Do you feel comfortable saying who got the better of who? 
Oh man, there's video out there, so I, I can't even deny it. Like he definitely got the best of me that that training session. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I fucked around and found out, I, huh. and I definitely found out the hard way. <laughs> um, uh, I kind of went in there like, oh yeah, sweet little wolf. Here we go. We're just playing around, and that wolf definitely bit. And I was like, oh crap, I was not expecting that. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I yeah, man, I want maybe you could say you were just playing possum. He thinks you're beatable now. You give him you give him that false hope in the training session, but then in the real fight, like was there any of that going on? Probably not, right? I mean, you were giving him your all. No, I mean, at the end of the day, like I could I could make excuses for it, like, oh, maybe I was giving my all, maybe it was this, maybe it was the fact that he was bigger, but like I give a thousand reasons why that uh training session didn't go my favor or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, it did it and that kind of gave me an uh um like a dose of reality. Like, all right, you got some shit to work on. It's not just like, uh, I, I will never be one of those guys to like sit there and say like, Oh, my opponent got lucky. And like, Oh, this happened or, or blame any kind of like, um, to, I, I'm just not gonna make an excuse for it. Like I definitely, um, he definitely got the best of me that day or whatever. Um, but I noticed at the end of it, I know I have a lot more, uh, in me than, than what I showed that day. And it's just up to me to go out there and, and uh, and prove it. So, um, it is what it is at this point. What did you learn from the shove cut experience? Um, so the biggest thing for me going that, uh, whole shop guys uh, experience, it was just like, I was just being pulled all over the place. Like during the shop kind experience, I had literally like a thousand things on my plate. Like I was, uh, I was finishing up two real estate deals. I was, uh, I was expecting my, uh, second son to be born the week of my fight. He ended wow. up being born six weeks early. Um, and it was just all these things that I had on my plate that I was trying to like, um, balance and take care of that. The fight kind of took, uh, it kind of took like the back seat, so to speak, where um, I was still going to training. I was still doing this, but like I was driving to training and my mind was like, okay, cool. I got to go training and as soon as I get training, I got these other 10 other things to do. Um, so it never really allowed me to go out there and like fully focus on the task that was at hand um, and, and give it my all. Like even up to um, till fight night, I was still like, all right, cool. Uh, go out there, get this fight done. And then immediately fly back home and have all these other things I had to finish up. Um, so that, that shop card fight was mainly just me just like, man, like put those, like learn how to like turn that switch off, put those things on the side for now and focus on the task at hand um, and going into the D-Rod fight and in this fight, that's exactly what I was able to do. I was kind of like, um, I wasn't as available for everyone else that I would be. Um, like I kind of made like uh, my kids and family my main priority and everything else came secondary. Um, and then training was the main focus. I mean, literally, even getting out of my comfort zone and, and, and spending time training at different camps for this camp, um, was something that I did where, uh, before I would just kind of like stay at home and stay with, stay with the same training partner, same coach and that kind of thing. Um, this last training camp really forced myself to get out of my element, out of my comfort zone, uh, and really challenge myself going into this fight. So how do you think it plays out? What do you, what are you feeling? Um, I feel great going into this fight. I feel like I can definitely push the pace on them and, and uh, get a, a late finish in this fight going into the third round for sure. Um, just based off of my ability and what I've seen from him in the past, um, I know for a fact they can take the deep waters and find a way to finish the fight. Looking forward to it, Neil. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate you joining us from all the way out there in Rio. Good luck to you. This is a big one. I uh, can't wait to see how it all plays out. All the best to you. Awesome. I appreciate it so much. Pleasure talking to you. All right. There he is. Neil Magny, the winningest welterweight in UFC history going up against Gilbert Burns in a massive fight on Saturday.